David Turk. Uh, I have lived in Port Hope the majority of my life. Present day right now I sell real estate and I'm also a Port Hope counselor. My family came, my uh, grandmother and my uh, grandfather uh, both were out from the Port Britain area mm -hmm. and uh, they got together. Uh, originally uh, my uh, grandmother was uh, from the States we were what is called United Empire Loyalists, and my uh, father also, or my grandfather, sorry. But anyways, uh, they then got connected, moved to Port Hope. My uh, grandfather uh, worked at uh, Matthews, or File, I want to say Matthews, I stand corrected though. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, they had uh, two children, Ray Turk, which is my father, and Mary uh, Mack, uh, who was Dr. Mack's wife. And then from there, our families sprung up. <laughs> my father operated a restaurant in downtown Port Hope for 39 years. Uh, he was the second oldest merchant on the uh, main street, Norm Gould being the oldest for Gould's uh, foot store. Um, I guess because of being uh, involved in the family business I got to meet a lot of people but uh, you could go into any store in downtown Port Hope and everybody was friendly, everybody knew each other. Um, it, it was great. It was a fantastic place. It was always busy. Uh, we had the beach where we had the pavilion, uh, the great big baseball park. Uh, I lived out on the Lakeshore Road where we had the uh, uh, Kingsfield, which was also another baseball park. And everybody was very sports minded, uh, either participating in the activity or being spectators. I always remember our July 1st parades. We had lots and lots of bands. There would be probably 11 to 15 of them. Wow. And once we had the uh, parade going down the main street, which you couldn't put a person between the people that were lined up to see the parade, we then all headed up to the town park where then the bands had a contest among each other and that would last the rest of the day. Uh, used to go swimming in the harbor, uh, we uh, swam in our beachfront, the pavilion we had dances in. Uh, it was a very uh, community-oriented, community uh, everybody uh, connected with each other, uh, we were all friends. Sundays were very quiet around Port Hope. Uh, everything was closed. Uh, and the other thing that a lot of people don't realize, Wednesday afternoons, uh, a number of the businesses closed. I went to uh, Central School uh, for one year, and then Howard Jordan School was brand new and opened up, so I was transferred up there. Uh, went to Dr. Hawkins School and went to our Port Hope High School. Uh, so it was quite involved school-wise there. There used to be a street, it was a continuation of John Street, mm -hmm. uh, that went right through El Dorado, which is now Cameco. Yeah. And uh, that's all been filled in with Cameco and that, but there was uh, uh, El Dorado on one side and you had houses on the other side. And uh, it was a very narrow street, but quite a viable street. And we had our train station there where the train was uh, mm -hmm. uh, active uh, throughout the whole day. It was a, quite a uh, viable community, very busy, and Friday nights and Saturday nights the town, town, downtown was hopping. I, I find it interesting the changes that we've had, but uh, I can remember uh, one of my favorite stores was Coleman and Phillips, mm -hmm. and Coleman and Phillips uh, had everything from appliances to furniture, but up on the second floor was Toyland. <laughs> and when we were growing up, that's where we went and sat on uh, Santa's knee and said what you wanted for Christmas, etc. So that was always a favorite, favorite memory. Uh, the other one where Zest is now down on John Street, that was our original Canadian Tire Store. And uh, there was lots of uh, gadgets in there. It was more automotive at that yeah. time, but they also had toys and fishing goods, etc. And then John Holman had a sporting goods shop on the main street. Mm -hmm. And uh, that one there, you had everything from rifles to, to uh, baseball mitts to uh, fishing rods. Um, and then down where our old fire department used to be before it was washed away with the uh, uh, flood, we had a number of businesses in there also. So as I say, it was a, a great town. I, I can honestly say that uh, the merchants back then really worked to help each other. And because uh, I know with myself uh, being raised in the food service, there was the uh, Blusos and the Diamonds that had the Royal Grill. Mm -hmm. And I grew up with their children and David and I used to get together on Friday nights uh, as we both uh, finished washing our father's floors then we'd have a, a coke out in the back parking lot behind <laughs> the Capitol Theatre 
And then there was the uh, Marx that had the uh, Chinese restaurant on the other side of the river. Um, uh, as I say, the Goulds, a uh, lot of family names uh, mm -hmm. uh, that were there. Uh, the clothing store, which was O'Neill's, where uh, Zip Mark first started off. Mm -hmm. uh, John Nesbitt, uh, he had a clothing store in town. If people were in need, we helped out. Uh, the churches were very big in the community back then and mm -hmm. congregations and helping each other. I can still remember uh, probably one of the most uh, Sometimes I can say probably exciting times now. That night it wasn't, but was our big flood. Yeah. And uh, we were all up at the, uh, I shouldn't say all up at the Legion, but we were, it was a Friday afternoon, so there was about a half a dozen of us that were sitting around a table when the uh, uh, Chief Damon came in and said, you, 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 you're with me now. And we were wondering what was going on. We realized it had been raining all day and that sort of thing. So anyways, we went down and that's when we started man in sandbags. And it was about six o'clock the next morning when uh, a number of us were getting home. But uh, that's wow. just what the community did. You pitched in to help everybody. Well, I, as I say, I think the flood uh, brought people even closer together, especially with the cleanup and mm -hmm. some of the businesses that were wiped out and uh, helping them out and getting restarted, etc. And then what's famous now is uh, the following year, a group of merchants decided to get together and let's have a celebration about it. So it became Float Your Fanny Down the Ganny. Yep. They uh, created a record about it and uh, here we are 30 years later and it's one of the biggest uh, events that Port Hope uh, celebrates every uh, first uh, weekend in April. It's a hard one to say, uh, as I say. They, uh, there's, uh, I can remember when we had the big fire on the main street, yeah. uh, which was Coleman and Phillips and all that. And again, the next morning people were out, the, the merchants and, and other individuals, to see what they could do to help and the building got rebuilt again, and uh, mm -hmm. we go from there. Port Hope is a survivor. I see it's only getting better. Uh, we're in a revitalization program now, uh, thanks to some of the programs that we have uh, with the municipality, uh, but uh, people are rejuvenating their buildings, so our uh, main street is looking alive and bright mm -hmm. and, and uh, refurbished back to the 18th century. Uh, new businesses coming in, and, uh, you know, uh, I look forward to uh, when the cleanup is finished because I think we will be one of the most viable and vibrant communities in all of North America. Mm -hmm.